Hey guys, what's up? It's Kyle here. Um, yeah, you know what it, you know you know what this video is. I haven't seen this in a while, but uh, I decided to take it out of the closet, dust it off a little bit, and uh, turn this some bit sideways and put it on my head. So uh, what I wanted to talk about is <laughs> um, okay. Well, I'll just I'll just say it like this here. Um, for all of my subscribers, all you guys know that um. Since Bountiful Glory this year, um, from TNA, um, and how Rude got screwed from Hogan, um, how I've made videos, um, two or three videos of my disappointment with that, and that since then I'm going to be taking a break and hiatus from watching TNA products altogether, pay-per-views, as well as the Impact shows. And I've stuck my guns to that. Um, however, um, TNA had a pay-per-view um, last night called Turning Point. I wasn't going to watch it, because, you know, like I said, I'm on hiatus from TNA, so I don't care what happens in that company. Um, so I watched a, uh, a video review of the IWR show, and uh, <clears throat> they're probably my only resource now um, in terms of what's happening within TNA, you know, because, like I said, I just don't, I don't care anymore um, with TNA. So I watched them to get the little scoop on them and, you know, their results and stuff for a TNA pay-per-view. And they say that the pay-per-view was absolutely ridiculous, horrible, terrible booking, just garbage from top to bottom. And then after that, one of the, uh, the panelists, uh, Ryan, who you guys know is the mad scientist, uh, 7890, um, made a rant video on, on this pay-per-view talking about how it's just absolutely ridiculous and it's horrible. And he told me to check it out myself, um, after I told him, if, you know, if this is as bad as you say it is, like, I gotta talk about this, and he told me, he said, hey, check it out, so, uh, I checked the pay-per-view out today, I think, again, I didn't have enough time to watch all the matches completely, but thank God I'm not gonna go back and watch the matches that I did not watch, but, I, let's just say, I watched enough to grasp the concept of what, um, the mad scientists and J-Man from IWR show, what they were talking about. And my God, this was an awful pay-per-view. I mean, just really, where do I start? Um, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna go from top to bottom, I'm just gonna just pick out random matches that I watched. Um, Crimson Matt Morgan. What the hell was that? Crimson and Matt Morgan. That match was absolutely terrible. They were giving love taps to one another. I mean, seriously. Um, if you didn't know any better, they, they looked like they were still green. I mean, they look, and Matt Morgan, especially like, Matt Morgan's been wrestling for like, what, nearly 10 years altogether. If you combine this, his run with TNA and WWE, he's been wrestling for almost like 10 years now, or 9. But anyway, you know, with that much experience, I didn't think Matt Morgan would look so green. And Crimson didn't look just as good either because he's, you know, supposed to be their next big thing. And he just was just the best Matt Morgan. And it ends in a double disqualification. Are Tammy trying to do a, trying to do what Mark Henry and Big Show did at Vengeance where it's a no contest between the two big men because they're just so big and powerful? Was that what Tammy was trying to do? If they did, they failed miserably because Big Show and Mark Henry had a fantastic match for two big men of their size, and they stole the show by breaking the freaking ring. So take that. Another match I wanted to talk about was the Rob Van Dam um, Daniels match. This was all right, nothing really special, but what does RVD have to get over on Daniels? It does not make sense. Rob Van Dam is always going to get a pop from the crowd because of what he's associated with, WWE, and people will remember from his things he did in ECW. So why have someone like Rob Van Dam get over on Christopher Daniels? Daniels needed this win because, obviously, I don't think he's going to do anything with uh, AJ Styles anymore. I mean, I don't know. So, I mean, honestly, he needed to get this victory. What is wrong with you, TNA? Um, another thing um, I had 
noticed as well in this current pay per view. Uh, that was a Jeff Hardy thing. Like, Jeff Hardy winning three matches in. Excuse me. In a row. If TNA was smart, they would have had Jeff Hardy lose this match tonight, or last night, and they build this rivalry up between Jared and Hardy. They could have gotten, they could have stretched this feud out, like, longer. But instead, Jeff Hardy's first return on a major pay-per-view, and he gets a victory, one, two, three, like that, on, on, on the big, the big head honcho. Doesn't make sense. And secondly, Jeff Hardy, I mean, his, Jeff Hardy has, has came out with some, you know, cool-looking mask designs or paint, face paintings, others weird but the one he had last night, my God, he looked like a glow-in-the-dark booger. Really. Jeff's face paint looked like a glow-in-the-dark booger. I mean, really. Just awful stuff. And then you get into the main event. Styles and Rude. Love these guys. Awesome wrestlers. This match was alright. I'd probably say this is probably the best match. On the card, probably. Um, maybe. You know, like some, once again, not nothing against these guys. But, I mean, you just so just states it with the rest of the pay-per-view, then when you get to the main event, it's like, you don't even care anymore. You're not there. You're not in tuned. But Bobby gets the victory over a cheap, cheesy, hold your draws, pen. Like, what is that? That doesn't make any, any sense at all. I mean... How come he? How come they can't make Bobby just a legitimate, just tough heel? Like, why does he have to be the pull your pull your trousers up to get the victory type of heel? I mean, the booking was just absolutely horrible for this pay per view for the matches that I watched at least. Just oh my god, unbelievably horrible. Um, you know, and, and the mad scientist had also mentioned as well of how. Um, the Mad Science also mentioned, too, of how, um, like, you know, after watching the papers you for him and, and even J-Man, how they said, like, you know, this, they don't know if they're going to, if they're going to, you know, can even watch TNA anymore, or, you know, want to do reviews on Impact, uh, on the Impact Wrestling TV show, and I completely understand, because, I mean, to me, when they build up Bobby Roode and they just snatch the rope from underneath the seat, like, during the pay-per-view, they changed their mind at the last second and had Bobby to lose at Bound for Glory. That was the last shot for me when it came to TNA. You know, like I said, I don't wish death upon the company because I think the more prominent companies we need, it's just better for business. But, I mean, good God, I don't, I'm not, uh, you know, since the whole Bound for Glory thing was rude, I have not been emotional. I, I stopped being emotionally invested in TNA and in their and they're wrestlers, I would say. And, I, you know, and it's not thinking to knock against Bobby, you know, Styles, Joe. I still love these guys. Still very talented. Love their matches. We still watch their matches from past and present because I like these guys that much, and they are great wrestlers. But as far as having faith in, in, in TNA to build these characters or to get behind or emotionally invest in these characters or in these wrestlers, that was long shot, dead, and gone with that whole Bound for Glory screw job thing. And it seems like now, you know, after, <clears throat> from Turning Point, um, uh, the mad scientists and J-Man themselves, they're feeling it, they're, they're feeling it now. Um, you know, the best thing I recommend is go cold turkey on TNA. I mean, really, because I found that it's been about a month now since Bound for Glory and that I haven't watched any TNA uh, television, pay-per-views, or whatever. And... I can honestly say I find myself ranting less on things in the wrestling world when I'm taking a break off, off of TNA. I mean, really, that's the best thing I can recommend is you guys go cold turkey on TNA for a while. Um, I mean, I know you, you know, probably want to still do the, um, the pay-per-view predictions and shows uh, and reviews for TNA, um, but as far as, like, watching, like, the, the Impact Wrestling shows, I mean, just... I recommend you guys take a break on that because, I mean, this is completely ridiculous. 
Um, you know, and, and one thing I find funny too is how, you know, I thought I thought WWE marks were bad, but you know who's worse than WWE marks? TNA marks. TNA marks are some of the most annoying people of like wrestling fans. They are so annoying. Because they will sit and defend a company and they know it's it's trash, they're giving garbage storylines and everything else, and they will utterly defend it. I'm sorry, I cannot do that. I will not do that. Um, you know, it's like um on the Mad Sciences video there was this one guy named Ham Baloney and he just liked my comment. And I think he, he spammed it because um, I was talking about TNA and he called me a bitch. Well, I gave him a piece of my mind right back on him um, concerning that comment that he gave that he gave me. But, you know, and then I, then I saw the dislike from the video and I'm like, these are straight TNA marks for disliking this video because you cannot be a TNA fan and literally come out of that turning point pay-per-view and say, oh, this was great, this was a good pay-per-view. You can't even say this was an okay, decent pay-per-view. This pay-per-view was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. And I will agree with Mad Scientist that this is possibly, quite possibly the worst pay-per-view, like, ever. I mean, and WWE has some bad, and WWE has some bad pay-per-views, um, like uh, Over the Limit, um, minus the Orton Christian match. That was the only good thing on that pay-per-view. But Over the Limit, um, the only they had a capital punishment. Those are probably like the crappiest pay-per-views for WWE um, this year. But those pay-per-views versus TNA Turning Point? Oh, TNA Turning Point wins by a landslide in terms of garbage pay-per-view. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, and TNA Marks will actually stand up and defend this crap. I mean, well, it was, it was good. It was, I mean, it's, it's this mistake. Stop lying to yourselves. You cannot tell me that what you saw last night was a good to anywhere decent okay pay-per-view. You just can't. And that's what really pisses me off with TNA hardcore marks because they will sit and defend something even though it's trash. And the WWE marks are just as guilty as doing the thing. But TNA marks are more, they get more offensive about it if you talk about TNA in any bad, negative way, shape, or form. They get more offensive and offensive and rallied up about it. I mean, it's like, cool your jets, bro. It's the honest God truth. I mean, are you on some propofol or, I mean... What the hell are you smoking or drinking? Because clearly you're not saying what I'm saying, you know. And I don't even drink alcohol, you know. I'm not judging anybody who does, but I'm just saying I don't have an excuse, you know, as to why I think the product is is, is good. You know, I'm completely sober, focused, mind, and everything else. And I clearly see that this is garbage. But for you to say, for any teeny mark to say, oh, this is great, you have to be kidding me. Like you're high, you're smoking something. Um, you know, so it, 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 this, this was just absolutely terrible, and, you know, and I heard that Spike TV um, wants to take Hulk Hogan uh, off TV for, you know, a number of weeks so that he won't overshadow some of the other talent, but after looking at last night's pay-per-view, they don't need Hulk Hogan to help, you know, screw the company. They can easily screw themselves over by themselves without the help of Hulk Hogan. I mean, looking at last night's pay-per-view, my God, that was absolutely horrible. And you know what? I think, um, I think the title for last night's pay-per-view of uh, well, is a is a perfect um, is a is a is a perfect example um, in the direction that TNA is going. <laughs> turning point, and it's, they're making a turning point, but not for the best. It's for the worst, um, honestly. And you know, in TNA. They have, uh, I've heard TNA has about six months to a year left contract with Spike. I don't know if they're going to uh, renew it or not. It hasn't been a word that it's going to be renewed or not. They're trying to keep this on the down low, but it's leaked out there anyway. That they have about a year left contract with Spike. They better get the wheels turning in a good in a good direction. Otherwise, Spike might not want to resign TNA. Um, so, yeah, so this is, uh, you know, my rant off of TNA's turning point. Absolutely just pathetic, crappy pay-per-view. Thank God I'm saying glory. I'm going to go see Glory by Honor um, this Sunday. You know, thank God for that. Um, 
because that's that that's 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 some real talent right there. That's some real wrestling. Um, you know, and I'm an ROH mark, but even I am not blind, you know, to certain things that ROH does. I'm not gonna go to an ROH house show or a pay per view event and say, Oh, this show was great or this match was just awesome just because of my love for Ring of Honor. I'm not gonna do that. I've never been those type of fans where I'm just a complete mark out for a certain wrestler or company and they just do no wrong. But with the TNA marks, it's like TNA does no wrong at all, you know. And that, that just freaking sickens me. And like I said, I'm an ROH mark. And you know what? I'll be, I'd be dead honest with ROH, you know. If there's an angle that I don't particularly care for or I think it's kind of crap, if there's a match that I think is crap, if there's a gimmick that I think is kind of crap, I'll call it out, you know. That's being truthful. I mean, good God. Um, so, I mean, yeah, you know, just... <sighs> wow. I mean, like I said, Ryan, J-Man, just take a hiatus from TNA for a while. Because I found myself doing less rant videos. And if I look at, and if you look at most of my rant videos, they probably are more about TNA than WWE or anything else. Pretend to professional wrestling. So, uh, yeah, just just go cold turkey on for a bit, man. Drag it out. Um, it's been good for me. It's been a breath of fresh air for me. Um, so, yeah, this is just my round of teenage turning point. Crappy pay-per-view. Let me know what you guys thought if you saw it. Leave in the comments below. Like, subscribe. Peace.